Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. And we're talking about sacrificial love at this junction. And really good verses for us to, to keep in mind when it comes to how we walk in love. And I'm going to talk about that today. Walk in love. Walk in love. Love is not, love is not a feeling. We talk about the agape kind of love. Love is a spirit. And it's activated by faith. Remember, f love and faith work hand in hand. Without it, then you can act in faith without love. Yeah. A lot of people do things, just do them. But the motivation, there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no mortar to the brick. There's nothing holding it together. And love is what holds us together. It keeps us, keeps us flexible, moldable, if that's a word. Uh, bonding. It, it allows for flexibility. Yeah. You know, the, it, Jesus came to give us the heart of the word. Not the letter of the law. He came to fulfill the law. But he came to give us the heart of it. So that we understand how to... What's the reason for this? What's the reason for this word? What's the reason for what these laws are? Because the laws are there. The law is not done away with. The law is still present today. Called the law of love. The law of faith. These are laws that are in motion that will never stop. Because they're, they're continuous. You think about the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and you have a list of that in Galatians 5, where love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. There's no limitation to them. Yeah. There is no end to them. That, that is the natural way for us to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, 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 it is natural for a baby coming out of your mother's womb to love. Mm -hmm. It's not natural to hate. We learn to hate. We are born to love. Right. Yes. That's right. Because God is love. Yes. God is love and He made us. Yeah. We're born to love. You, 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 you gain these different types of feelings as you go on throughout your years in life. And depending on what you face and what you go through, the dis disappointments and the discouragements that come along the way. And that starts to jog your mind and actually starts to sear and burn things in your side of your head <laughs> and you start living by and you'd be surprised how much you live by wounds over faith yeah. people live by feelings more than they do by faith yeah. and what god says mm -hmm. instructions are there instructions are there we have the we have the manual for our lives but we we you know we don't how much time do we spend reading the manual on how we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to live you know one thing to be born again but then thereafter it doesn't stop just you know it's not automatic everything's not automatic your position is automatic you are automatically saved if you give yourself to Jesus Christ that is because of what he did but for the benefits of what is in the word to be experienced there are there are some things you got to do yeah. it's not automatic he that doesn't work, doesn't eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you got you to start doing something. You have to have corresponding actions to who you are as a person. There has, there has to be. Who are you? Who are you really? And most of the time, the image is that reflection in the mirror. The constant judgment on yourself. On, and that's what you look at. And that's what you go from. That's not who you are. And yes, I mean, think about it. Who, if you take a picture, for those, for those of us that have been here for a little bit of time, and you go back to your teen age, has, have there been some changes in the, in the physical appearance? <laughs> you say, you can, no, no, no. <laughs> Watch the, for the lightning. <laughs> no, but you know that there's, there are these physical changes but something happens within us 
that when it comes to your spiritual condition, that never ages. Yeah. Never ages. It says that you are what? Renewed day by day from glory to glory, and it's ad infinitum. You add the, you're adding on. So you always measure yourself by who you are in spirit, not by what you look like. Now, what you look like should be a reflection of who you are in spirit. Right? But what gets in the way? Your mind. That's that middle mark. You know, that's that middle place. That's that one part of us that dances around in, in, in your life and it's just and sometimes it's it's like the way the psychologists and, and the evolutionists say that we're that fiery mechanism that's going off in our heads. It's like that. And it's constantly beating your head. <laughs> beating your brain. Because you're having a fight. Who but think about it. If you're having a fight mentally Who's fighting? But think about it. Who's fighting? The real you. Your spirit. Fighting against the negativity that is trying to control the way you act physically. That's taking place in your mind. You're fighting against what's not natural. It's not natural for you to hate. What well, do most people say? What do they say in the world? This is natural. It's only that. I'm only what? Human. Human. Which is an excuse because the statement in and of itself is the way mankind has been made. Dirt inside of a uh, spirit inside of dirt. Humus man. Man is spirit. Humus is dirt. Spirit lives inside of man. Inside of body inside of the dirt. So I'm only human. Yeah, that's no revelation. Everybody is a human. Now, how you think and process, that's a whole different thing. So that's why parenting, when we're growing up and we have children that come along, what do we always are aiming to do as parents? What are we trying to do? Protect them from getting what? Hurt. Why? Because we know by experience, that hurt can cause a belief system that will have an impact on your decision making throughout your life. So yeah, we do our best. Now the bottom line is, sometimes, you know, kids will be kids. And you think about it from a kid, that's a, that's a term for a goat. And that's when they start acting out of character because they're acting like kids. Well, you're not kids, you're not goats. You're, you are people, little people, right? But then sometimes you act like a goat. Because <laughs> you're being stubborn. Oh, let's put it this way. Let me give it a positive twist on that. You're being dominion-minded, authoritative, because that's the way you're made, natural, mine. This is mine. That's dominion mentality. Well, as a parent, what are you aiming to do? You know, trying to guide, and that's what, that's what training has to do with. Train up a child in the way they should go. That talks about having that bent toward what is inside of them. Always looking to see what, because we, we can't determine what's in them. We, I can't determine as a dad and my wife as a mom, this is what you're gonna do. I can't do that. That's not up to me. That's right. That's up to God <laughs> and the child. But it's it's difficult because in the interim, you know, you're aiming to want to, you know, I don't think any parent in their right mind want their children to fail. Nope. We all want them yes. to succeed. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's a natural inclination. So there, there's, there are things in us, and I, I'm only using those illustrations to state to us that there are natural things built in us that God gave us, because God is a first what? Father, Father before He is God. Yeah. God is a Father. 
And as a father, he, he created everything for us to succeed in life, yeah. not to lose. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have everything we need for life and godliness. It's already here. We're not mm -hmm. trying to get it. It's already here. Mm -hmm. So the, the main ingredient, because it's who God is, God is love. Say it. God is, God is love. Say it again. God is love. That's what that's who that's what God made us. He made us in this in his exact same image. It is natural for us to love. It is unnatural for us to hate. What happens to hateful people? People. What happens to their physical bodies? What happens to their mind? Yes, they start aging physically. They start experiencing tumors and ulcers. All these different things that are foreign <coughs> To the body, what, is, what does envy do to the, to the joints of the bones? It rots them. So all these little psych, psychological things, these juices, this, this uh, adrenaline that comes because of this hatred and this anger, and this, uh, what does it do to the joints? Yeah, it's, it, the, the adrenaline is released and goes to the joints and starts eating away at it. Physically. So we, we, have, we have been given life. Yeah. And life, what is it, where does it come from? It comes from who God is. God is life. God is love. Yep. That's where it comes from. Love heals. Think about that. Yeah. Love frees us. Mm -hmm. But now, here, here's where the sacrifice. You know, why do we have to sacrifice? Why did I title it sacrificial love? Because of the disobedience we've had and experienced in our life. Yeah. We're sacrificing today to fix what was natural in the, in the inception of when you came into this world as a child. It was natural for you to love. That was natural. But there were experiences that you went through in life that brought you to this place that you have to sacrifice now to get rid of that mindset. Mm -hmm. Discouragement and disappointment. Those are the main emotions that you experience when things are not going the way they should go. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if, it's, if something's not going the way it should go? <laughs> Just, you get frustrated. You, get dis you can face emotional wounds. All these different things that come along with it. And so, that, so there's processes that you, ha you must go through. Saved people. I'm, yeah. talking to, I'm not talking to sinners. No. I'm talking to sage people that have wounds within their souls and then they impacts their mind and then their wills are either deciding based on what God says or contrary to it. Yeah. Because now your God is your wound. You're listening to somebody, to something, some reasoning, right? And that Will decision making comes from, unfortunately, hurts and wounds. Mm -hmm. Once again, Romans 12, renew your mind. You have to. And, and when you start to get this, and this is, the, this is the creative nature of God. The creative nature of God is in us. Creative nature. Think about thoughts and ideas. That's creative. Things today is life is generated b from thoughts and ideas, right? That's creative. So this create creativity generates life. So we, as individuals, making a decision to renew our minds to what is the creative source, and what is that? What does first? Uh, what does Saint Gospel of John chapter one say? Stay to us. Verse one: In the beginning was what? Oh, was the, word. the word. And the word in the Greek is logos, and that means ideas. Right. We're talking now about God and how He functions and who He is to us. Mm -hmm. Our Father is the Creator. And we come from that same stock. Mm -hmm. If we, what happens to a man that does not produce? What happens to them psychologically? What happens to them? They're crazy. 
Yeah, they feel. Yeah, they feel like. Yeah, they go. They go. They go off. And we see, and because they they just like give up, and allow for other things to control their thinking. And that's that's the thought pattern of. And I say it from a man's perspective. And so, because obviously I'm a man. So as a as a man, if I'm not producing, I don't. I'm talking now being saved. I'm not talking about being a sinner. If I do not produce, it makes me feel worthless. I have no value. How much should you charge somebody for work you do? What are you worth? What are you worth in, a, in dollars? If you could put a number to it. 100 an hour. How much should you, ladies, how much should, are you worth per hour? So, so, if, so think about it. There are people who are being paid $5,000 an hour, $10,000 an hour. Where are we in our thinking? Where, are, where is the value? And again, once again, you know, I'm not talking about th like this being a money thing, because because remember, it's not about the what the need. It's about what the seed, the seed. service. Yeah, it's a seed. It's a seed. Service is a seed, yeah. right? Yes. Where does that what it, where does that come from? Creativity. Yeah, creativity. I think of another word for creativity would be vision. idea, vision. 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 Yes. What do you see? What do you see in yourself? And how do you feel? Like I asked the question, if, if you were the only one that were to follow, why would we follow you? Why would anyone want to follow you? Remember the Monday night? Why would anyone want to follow you? And see, because everyone, just like Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I follow Christ. You will always have followers. Whether you like it or not, someone is looking at you. So if you were the only one God had, where would the world be today? <laughs> food for thought guys <laughs> food for thought and now again once again now we're we're talking now about this build up because we're, we're building we're building ourselves up we build ourselves up every day don't answer me this I'm just throwing it out here did you pray this morning and in praying what does it do yeah, it, get, it gets rid of all the questions you have about your, who you are as a person. Or how you start doubting who you are as a person. Let me put it that way. You start eliminating all these things. Because as you do pray and you're talking to the one who solidifies you as an individual. That's, go, we're going to the source. And this is the one time that you need to make, it, for the lack of better words, a selfish time. And I'll say it more so from a positive end. An isolated time. Yeah. You and God. What happens? When it's you and God, now you have the opportunity to free yourself because you're going to the source, the one who, who liberates you from all this stuff because the bondage is there from all this fear, doubt, and unbelief. Questioning, constantly questioning yourself, your decision making, everything else. And we do that. We judge ourselves every day. It's an ongoing thing. <sighs> I gotta hold the sneeze back. Sorry. <laughs> it was there. I was like, I got this. <laughs> okay. First John chapter four. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna read from let's see here. I don't because I don't want to read the whole thing. Let's read from verse number sixteen, I think so. Sixteen, yeah. And so we know, and this is NIV, 
and rely on the love of the love God has for us. God is love. There, there's the word, right? Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete. Now, here's the, here's the work side, guys. God is love, right? We all know that. And if we're in God, are you all in God? Yes. We're in God because of Jesus Christ. But here's the work. Here's where the work comes in. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are all like Jesus. There is no what? Fear in love. Fear in love. This is the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, does, what this, does this fear imply? It implies insecurity. It's another psychological term. Insecurity. Poor self-image. How you think of, of yourself. Right? And again, once again, whether it be something that's abstract or self-induced, it doesn't matter. It still boils down to the same thing. You still need to overcome this fear. Okay? So fear, there is no fear in what? Love. Love, love liberates you. Love, another word for love, is trust. So when you think about love and trust, if you're trusting, there's no fear in there. I have no reserve whatsoever with my wife. I can speak to her about my faults. There are times I may have some questions or whatever. I trust her her opinion 100% there's no question in my mind I never have to question whether there's, there's some man at the house if I'm out working and I don't have any kind of thought in my head total trust 100% before I used to be jealous I, I love my wife and I still can get jealous but but because I have so much trust in who she is, the jealousy doesn't hit me like that. Before when I was younger, yeah. Like, hey, why do you keep talking to him? <laughs> yeah, just go, on, go marry him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, I would go to the extreme. <laughs> but I've grown, I've matured from that type of immaturity. I have total trust in my wife. <clears throat> Can you say that about everybody? No. Everyone's at different levels in their life. Yeah. And if you don't know somebody, and this is, you know, that's, that's like when it comes to, you, to the ladies, especially young ladies, and you, know, and you come across and you're going to meet somebody and you meet them for the first time, and <laughs> you're like all in trusting this person. That's not wise. Why? You don't know them. <laughs> so, do we trust God? Yes. Okay, we trust God. So, but here's the work side, guys. The work side has to do with trusting each other. Yeah. Okay, I'm your pastor, right? So, do you trust me? Yes. Why? of what I say and what I do what I what I do affirms what I say how I live <coughs> can you imagine if if I had loose eyes as a pastor you know Ashton would cut them out <laughs> I'd be like Samson <laughs> where are the pillars <laughs> It, it, the the commitment to God, mm -hmm. my love for God, yep. that's first and foremost mm -hmm. over everyone. And because of that, that's why there's that confidence in who I am as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as an uncle, yep. mm -hmm. uh, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. So... That has to be there. Now, here's the strength in, in who I am as a pastor. What's the strength in it? Consistency. Yes. That's why it's embarrassing to me 
personally, and I'm sure you guys would agree with this. I mean, you guys are all seeing me. Well, I didn't always have this weight on me. I mean, you know, you could be like the, like the, um, the way a, an elephant is trained from a baby by tying that chain to it where it can't move and then it gets so big and huge and massive but he feels he can't pull the chain out when in reality it can. <laughs> you know, or, 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 you know, like, you know, that illustration of the, the king has no clothes on but our, our eyes are like, no, that's the way he's dressed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that would be, that'd be a, a shock. <laughs> I don't even want to walk shirtless around you. <laughs> the, the, the point is, is that there's, there's got to be some correlating actions with who I am as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yes, it does matter to me. It matters to me how my health is, number one, yeah. and how my body is. Because it adds, you, you all know this. And you young people, you, I'm believing you won't experience it. Okay. Okay. But the years go on. And things start to impact your joints and your, all these different things that you start facing in your physical body. That if you're not caring for it the way it should be. Okay, so if your body needs potassium and you say, oh, I don't want to take vitamins. So you need to eat 22 bananas a day in order to, for you to get the potassium you need. For you to get the potassium you need. Well, that's why they came up with these, this idea. You know, it's technology. They came up with what is known as vitamins. Mm -hmm. yep. Vitamin C. That's right. You know, it depends. And then you got to know, what, what do I need to take? Not everything. I took, <laughs> I took, <laughs> when my wife was going, having, we're having babies, she had prenatal vitamins. And I said, well, it was good for her. It was good for me. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Bad decision. <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't even want to know. Because <laughs> my body didn't need it. It rejected it automatically. Too much of it. Of something. <laughs> it wasn't, I don't even know what it was. I know it was good for her. But not good for me. <laughs> you, we know what we need to do. There are things that when it comes to these... these um, like, like for example... Y'all believe for healing in your body, but you're not doing in the physical what you need to do. Not, not, I'm not speaking one way or another on medication. If you're taking medication, you believe through that and, and pray against the residual impact of, because there, it's not a natural way of healing, right? It's medication. It doesn't heal you. You're, it's setting your body up for your body to heal itself. Because God made the body to heal itself. So if you add in stuff in your body, you know, your, your, uh, your blood cells, are they going uh, clockwise, right? They're going clockwise. And when you put medication in, it stops it and makes it go counterclockwise. So you're, you're fighting against yourself if you're putting um, medication in there that's going to kill off some of these cells. Now the intent is to kill off the, the bad cells. That's the intent of it. Mm -hmm. But there are residual impacts from that. So you have to be wise about that. And I can tell you one way or another. I'm not a doctor to tell you one way or, the, or another. But I say that as a believer, do you nullify the care your body needs? Vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, all the different vitamins that your body needs. Go to the dentist, get your checkups, get your physicals, do all, all those things. You, you, I know you're all faithful to that, at least your yearly checkup, right? I know you all are. I know you all are. Say I am. I Don't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Do what you need to do for your longevity of life. I want the best of what God has for me. Yeah, you go, I mean, yeah, you know, now I think most, a lot of the, well, at least the past physicals I've had, they just drew my blood. And they were able to tell everything was going on in me. Yes. All those things that add up to what you need in order for you to live a, a fulfilled life. Now, all things being equal, 
We're now talking about where life, where the rubber meets the road, and where does that matter? Where does the life really matter? Look at the person next to you. Say, you matter. You matter. You matter. This is, this is why we do what we do. This is why we eat right. This is why we receive the, the, you know, the uh, physical uh, assistance that we need in order to guide our health and, and where we're supposed to be. This is why we gain the knowledge we need for our wealthy place. This is why we need everything we need for us to the people that matter. Yeah. Or it has no significance. Sure. What's the reason for it? Yeah. Have this great vision with no one to celebrate it yeah, with exactly. you. So, you got to learn to live a selfless life. Selfish people isolate. What happens to a selfish person that isolates? They become angry. They're constantly in a battle with themselves. As a result, they become angry. So when it comes to other people around them, it's a whole different ballgame. You don't know how to be amongst other people. You have to draw on what you have. What do you have? <laughs> Anger. Yeah. Not towards them. Towards yourself. Yeah. Well, see, that's not generating life. Life generates... Baby, can you come here, baby? Come here. Yeah, you know, you're my only baby. Well, I mean, I have other babies. Right here. Hi, baby. Hello. How are you doing? How's I'm your day? Well. Very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I come when I come home, we make sure that she has a, a plaque on the on the ball. It says, "Always kiss me good night." In our bedroom. In our bedroom. Mm -hmm. So, I kiss her good night. For years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. And we don't get deep in our kisses. We just do the regular. Oh. Okay. Do Christian kiss? Is that a Christian kiss? No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but you understand that that right there, that right there. Come on. This is my baby girl. This is the baby girl. This is the baby. Soon to be married. Yeah, and blessed to have a future son-in-law right here. Yeah. Good man. Good, great man. Well, this right here. This, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Okay, you can sit down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? I know she's been, she was been fighting symptoms because I was going to go, go uh, give her a hug. Good night. She goes, Dad, you may want to stay away from me. No problem. <laughs> Have a good night, baby. <laughs> but this is where it matters. Right here. Got my son here today. Gilbert. This is where it matters. Right? Our friendship. Where, 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 where did we go yesterday, Mark? We went to IHOP. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and we had, we had, yeah, all you can eat pancakes, but what it says, she said, all you can eat. I said, how, how many pancakes do we get? All you, all you can eat. I said, I can eat, barely eat these two. <laughs> and it's like that. That's not like our normal routine, normal eating, you know, we don't eat like that. It's just, Hanging out time, you know, me and Mark. So, but that's, that's, this is right here. Yes. This matters. Yes. Spending time with each other. Mm -hmm. Listening, hearing, yes. communicating. Mm -hmm. That's love. Yep. That's love. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Okay, so, so let's read on. Where are we at? Verse number 18? 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Okay, cause so what does the word perfect mean? What does it mean? In a, in a nutshell, somebody give me a definition? Mature. Mature. Okay, so if it's mature, that means it's something that you practice. If it's mature. Is there immature love? Yes. Imperfect love? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and usually that hinges on between the phileo and the eros. You know, phileo, the romance, and the erotic. It's a root word for erotic is eros. That's that sexual time. And thinking that's love. 
was it's it's a part of, based on Greek mythology is part of not Greek mythology but based on Greek definition is part of this love pendulum as it were this diagram where it's drawn from these Greek words when we're talking about agape love what are we talking about a love of faith yeah so it, like even in in the in the inner sanction of our marriage it's agape yes we do have phileo we have our friendship and we do have our romance we have the other aspects of love right but but faith has faith is in the romance. Yeah, that's true. See, you think about moms. You know, they, before they were moms, they were wives, and then they became moms. Things happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Changes take place. Mm-hmm. I don't need to get into details on that, right? <laughs> Changes happen. Yeah. So does it alter the love factor? The covenant that we establish? Am I married for the physical? The eros? It's part of it. But it's not the reason. That's why agape supersedes all of them, because I can love, and that's where this distorted image comes with the uh, individuals that choose to change their physical anatomy and live a certain way, contrary to how they were born, that now they're living contrary to the natural. What is what, how you were born, and the way God made you, intended for you to be, from the beginning Mm -hmm. and then bringing in the romance phileo and the eros assuming that's what love is I even heard a statement made that if I don't have the sexual intercourse with this woman I'll never I how can I marry them I gotta have sex first before so I can really know them that's the eros Mm -hmm. right well It's not the right way to to think on this. Mm -hmm. Because for those of us that have been married for some time, we know that it's not about sex. But when you're not married, it's like, it's all about sex. (laughs) 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 It's assumed, right? But after some time, that doesn't fix arguments and disagreements and anger and, and all the stuff that comes along with being married. That's not reality. That's not reality. That's not reality. Oh, yeah. And it, it, I even heard this expression, angry sex. Like, after a fight, let's go for it. Nothing's fixed. Nothing's fixed. That same issue is still there. That's why you keep having this angry sex. And then how long does that go? Not long. Yeah, eventually it won't be. Over time. Let me ask you, ladies. Do you appreciate when you're valued? When you're looked upon, not, not just as a, a thing, an object to be used. How do you feel about that? I, I just want to, use, you know, I just, hey, you're my wife and this is what you're supposed to do. And then when I'm done, I'm done. You're gone. It can come across that way. may not be said that way, but that's what it sort of seems like. But that's not valuing the, the, that person. How precious are you? To that man. I say you're not married. But you guys are, you know, acting as husband and wife. How much are you valued? And in our day to day, and I'm you know, I'm not saying it is it's like this in all churches, but a lot of pastors and you know, they feel that, you know, you're supposed to be subject to me. 
I'm the head of the house. Period. You listen to me. Where's the value in that? Are we not joint heirs with Christ? Or is it just for the men? It's supposed to be for everybody. Right? Joint heirs with Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, let's move on. Where are we at? What time is it? Oh, we got time. Okay, verse 17. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And I like that. Ah, it drives it out. Get it out. Yes. Get rid of that fear, that insecurity, that, that because that's what will lead you to treat each other wrong. Yes. It will cause you to live an abnormal, abnormal lifestyle. Yes. It's not normal when it comes to God's biblical standard of living. Yes. Okay? So, because fear has to do with Punishment. Think about that. People who are in fear abuse. That's where this abuse comes from. You think you're going to get over on me? You think you can tell me what to do? I'm going to show you something else right now. And they abuse their wives. Or... Wives abuse their husbands. <laughs> it happens too. Outside of my inner sanct sanction of family, I've just counseled men and women, husbands and wives, where the wives are beating the husbands. You think it's the other way around. It usually is. There's something going on. If, if, if a female goes to that extreme, there is something going on in the home. There's something that's happening with the male that he's not being a man. Deciding what to do. Decisions. Of all the things that females want. It's decision making. That's the strength, right? Okay, so let's, let's, let's move forward. I don't want to keep going on that. It says, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. That's, this is verse 18. The one who fears, insecure, poor self-image, is not made perfect in love. Verse, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. So we've got to follow his, his example. He loved us. We got to follow how he loved us. How did Jesus love us? He gave his life. I gave an assignment to the both of you yeah. to study out the book of Ephesians. The whole book? Not the whole book. Remember chapter 5. Like, chapter 5. <laughs> yes. All the way down to the end of the chapter. Yes. Within that, we studied out. <laughs> Should have studied out. <laughs> The, the way a woman should be treated and the way a man should be treated. Yeah. What do women want? Love. What do males want? Respect. In a man's mind, that's the interpretation is love. When you respect. Value. The value. Value system, guys. We're talking now God's value. The way This is the normal psyche of how we're supposed to. Women need to feel loved. They need to feel it. We say, I know we don't live by feelings. When it comes to marriage, you need to show, feel. Um, okay, let me, let me just read this. This is going to be from 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. This is the world, um, world... Messi uh, messianic Bible, okay? I tried to remember the translation. <laughs> WMB, World Messianic Bible. Okay, this is how it reads. Because in the original King, King James and New King James, 1 John 3, 18. Somebody read that for me. <coughs> go, go ahead and read it. All right. So let us not words. That's, is that NIV? Yes. Okay. Let us not word, love in words or speech. But in actions and truth, right? Yes. Okay, now listen to this little tidbit on this, okay? My little, this is, this is World Messianic Bible. My little children, children, 
let's not love in word only or with tongue only but in deed and in truth because you can you can say it the way it's written in NIV New King uh, New King James King James that translation and it says my little children let us not love in word but in deed and in truth yeah. and it makes it seem like then I should never I don't have to say it yeah. I don't have to say it because my actions show it don't I bring food home every day don't I bring the money home so you can pay the bills don't you have a roof over your head and you have clothes on your back where's what about that isn't that loving you oh yeah I will. I'm not gonna argue with that of course it is you're giving of your hours, your life, your time out there on the streets and working whatever business and whatever you're doing. Yeah, of course that is. That's true. But it does not exempt you based on how we read it from the World Messianic Bible. Let us not love only, not to the exclusion of, in word. Not only in tongue, but indeed in truth. Because then you can have that side of it too. Where that's all you're doing is saying it in word and in tongue, but not showing actions. So you got to have the balance there. Corresponding actions. Work together. But you, you, it doesn't cancel out you saying it, too. So that's important. It's important because women, females, need to be praised. It's a psychological need. Why? Do you know why? Do you guys know why? Because where did they come from? They came from who? Yes, from God. But remember that? Who was that? Remember? Adam. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Remember that? <laughs> I was saying the rib, man. <laughs> yes. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the rib pulled out. That's why... Females need to have that from a man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why it can be misused. That's why what? That's why it can be misused. Because we do something we need. Yes, exactly. Did you hear that? That's why it can be misused because it's something you females need. Yeah. What happens? There, I mean, <laughs> I know of these, this husband and wife situation, and they. They didn't want to get rid of the husband. The husband wanted another woman. Brought her in to the home because the wife still wanted the husband. So two f women, one married, one they're married to, and the other one they're with in the house. Because she didn't want to get rid. She didn't want him to leave. That's how insecure she was. Any smart woman would say, you get your stuff in, get out. Because of your value. Yes. Your value for who you are as a person. Right? Yes. That, 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 that makes sense. That makes word. Yep. This is where you have to have this, this ingredient called love. This who we are naturally built in us. <laughs> And let it be a part of your everyday makeup, what you do. Live a selfless life. If you live a selfless life, you end up becoming a good listener, a good communicator, a good lover, a good giver. Everything good from living a selfless life. Good things. Amen. All right, so I got to stop. So I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. Trust this has been beneficial to you and informative as well. If it has impacted your life, please let us know. You can email us at hello at faithwirechurch.org. Uh, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, uh, share this, and anything else on that? No. Nope. That's it. And, and hit the like button. Yes. yes. Thank, yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. If you want to give to our ministry, you can give through, uh, to, through Venmo to Faithwired. And we'll see you next time.